This Miko training session is about the NEMA 2000 signal. During this session, you will learn how the binary data signal, that's the ones and zeros, are represented as voltages on the NEMA 2000 bus. Let's consider a section of the NEMA 2000 bus as shown, with a T-piece and a drop cable to a device. Inside the cabling, there are 12 volts positive and negative conductors, and a NEMA low data wire in blue, and a NEMA high data wire in white. The reason for their names will become very clear during this session. It's important to note that even if a device is not fully powered from the bus, bus power is still required to enable the device to interact with the bus. So why are NEMA data wires referred to as high and low? NEMA 2000 is a differential system, so the data is represented by the difference in voltage between the data wires and not reference to ground. The data pulses are far too fast to measure with a multimeter, so electronics engineers use a device called an oscilloscope, and this can capture these very quick voltage pulses and show them on a graph. But just for this demonstration, let's just imagine that time was brought to a standstill just for this demonstration. Let's see what our multimeter would say. If you were to meter from the negative wire to the can high white wire with the meter set to DC volts, when the bus is actively sending a logic state zero, you'll see a voltage from negative to can high of 3.5 volts and the bus is said to be in a dominant state. If the voltage between the negative and the white can high wire is 2.5 volts, then the bus is said to be in a recessive state and is currently in the process of sending a logic state of one. Let's see what's happening with the blue wire. Metering between the negative and the blue can low wire in our bubble of pause time here will show a voltage of 1.5 volts when the bus is in a dominant state, representing logic zero, and it will show a voltage of 2.5 volts in a recessive state. So as this is a differential system, the NEMA devices are actually only looking at the differences between the can high and the can low wires. So we should see two volts between the can low and high when the bus is in a dominant state. And when the bus is in a recessive state, we should see zero volts between the can high and the can low wire. So the reason, back to the original question, why the data wires are named can high and can low is simply that the can high wire goes high in voltage to represent a dominant state and at the same time, the CAN low wire goes low in voltage. One of the very counterintuitive elements of CAN bus technology is that the logic state zero is represented by a difference of voltage in the data wires, whereas the logic state of one is represented by zero difference on the data wires. This concept can be shown more visually using the correct tool for the job. These voltages are changing up to 250,000 times per second, so it's not possible to analyse the data with a standard multimeter. As shown here is an oscilloscope, and this allows us to capture and view very quick signals as voltages on a graph. With an oscilloscope, we can take a snapshot of the pulses and analyse the voltages. Let's look at the first few bits of a data message called a CAN frame. Well, the first bit is a start bit, and this serves two purposes. It lets the other nodes on the CAN bus know that some data is on the way, and it is flexible in length, so it can be adjusted to enable other devices to synchronize. Mm -hmm. 
After the start bit, the next bit we have in our example here is a Logic 1. As mentioned earlier, on a NEMA 2000 bus, Logic State 1 is represented by a recessive state on the bus. Named so as the voltage difference between CAN high and CAN low data wires is actually zero. And whilst both CAN high and CAN low wires on the bus are 2.5 volts above ground, they are both the exact same voltage, so no difference exists between them. So during the transmission of a logic 1, the voltage difference between CAN high and CAN low is zero, and the bus is said to be in a recessive state. So let's move on to the next bit. The next bit in our example here is a zero. And in the world of NEMA 2000, this logic state of zero is represented by a dominant state on the bus. This means it's represented electrically by a voltage difference of two volts between the CAN high and CAN low wires. CAN high is at 3.5 volts above ground and CAN low is only at 1.5 volts above ground. So there is a differential voltage between the two wires of two volts. Another key feature of CAN bus is the repeated resynchronizing of the listening devices. All nodes can readjust their timing whenever the bus goes from a recessive logic one state to a dominant logic zero state. There is no centralized clock on a CAN bus to set the tempo. So this is done repeatedly by whichever device happens to be talking and the other devices follow its lead. So let's have a look at the next bit. We're back to a logic one state now and you can see the voltages are now the same. They're both at 2.5 volts above ground so there is no difference between the CAN high and the CAN low wires. But notice that the next bit is also a one. So the status of the CAN wires just remains the same for the next bit event. And this is what we call no zero return, as the voltage does not go to zero from one bit to the next. The transmitting device effectively just sends a slightly longer bit and as the timing between devices is matched so well, they all know this represents another separate bit of the same logic state. In our case, this is two ones. Sooner or later, the other devices may drift out of sync with the talking device, as remember, there is no central clock. But also, remember what happens each time the bus goes from a one to a zero? A logic zero places the bus in a dominant state with a high two volt difference between the CAN high and low wires. And this gives the other devices a reminder of the timing and they resynchronize their listening. Notice now that the next bit is the same. And as this is a non-zero return system, the voltage will just remain the same for the next bit event. So the two dominant logic zeros are joined together into one long electrical pulse. Again, as the listening devices on the bus are following the beat of the talker, they will know this is two zeros and not just one, simply by the duration of the pulse. Back to a logic one recessive bit, shown here by zero voltage between the CAN high and CAN low wires. It is possible to analyze these pulses with a small computer controlled oscilloscope. And this is a great way to find faults in devices or cabling. And there is much more on this later in the course.
So let's have a look at the NEMA 2000 signal key points. NEMA 2000 is a differential system. It's a no zero return system. So the voltages do not return to an idle state between pulses. The logic one is denoted by a recessive state on the bus where the CAN high wire would be at 2.5 volts and the CAN low wire would also be at 2.5 volts. So the differential voltage would be zero. A logic zero is represented by a dominance bus where the CAN high wire would be high at 3.5 volts and the CAN low wire would go low down to 1.5 volts. And this would give us a differential voltage of two volts on the bus. Devices have to resync regularly, and this is done each time the bus goes from a one to a zero state. And an oscilloscope can be used very effectively to find faults on the NEMA 2000 bus, and there's much more on this later in the course. So in this session, we have covered the NEMA 2000 signal.